right now let, uh, welcome back students to one more session what did we learn till now we have completed group 1 acidic radicals group 2 acidic radicals now i've come to independent radicals so these are the list of independent radicals sulfate phosphate borate and fluoride i'll be dealing with this every independent radicals have their different different tests different different confirmatory tests also done so let us write group 3 acidic radicals are also called as independent radicals done let's start in that independent radicals category the first anion is sulfate sulfate is so4 minus 2 done so the very basic uh, simplest test which easily if you get sulfate you're lucky i have to tell you so once the salt is given to you let us assume here the salt is sodium sulfate so if you have a doubt if the anion is not responding to dilute sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid come directly to the sulfate and do this test you will get the confirmatory test directly so sulfate what is the confirmatory test take some barium chloride and add directly to the salt solution so once you add to that immediately you will get a white pp of just see here double displacement reaction barium sulfate and sodium chloride is out so the formation of white ppt confirms the presence of sulfate so the white ppt is due to barium sulfate further you can also confirm your sulfate presence what you can do is you take the same white ppt and in one more test tube you take concentrated nitric acid and see when you add this barium uh, sulfate white ppt into concentrated nitric acid it remains insoluble so that confirms the presence of sulfate anion simplest isn't it salt plus barium chloride giving us barium sulfate white ppt which is insoluble in nitric acid concentrated nitric acid over now let us come back and test the phosphate anion independent radical now first of all whenever you have an anion as i told you the preliminary test ones are very very important for us so what is the preliminary test dry heating test i've already shown you the dry heating this what the different colors of different anions then flame test also so for when i have a phosphate uh, anion dry heating test there only you will get that understanding what is that you take the salt in a dry test tube and start heating under bunsen burner flame when you heat it what will happen the salt increases in volume it puffs you know it increases in volume and when you see the increase in puffiness in that salt then you can say phosphate is present directly you can come to this observation or this come to this test and do finally the confirmatory test so in dry heating test phosphate anion what does it show it shows puffiness or <coughs> increase in volume in which one increase in volume in dry heating test dry heating test done after that you are going to come back to this what you are going to do is now see here ammon uh, sorry sodium phosphate is a um, uh, sodium hydrogen phosphate is a salt given to me here i am testing for phosphate now in that what you do first you are going to take the salt in the test tube and you are going to add nitric acid concentrated nitric acid into the test tube and you start heating it once you heat it then you are going to take ammonium molybdate so once you take the salt add concentrated nitric acid heat up and then get back to your workstation then start adding ammonium molybdate into that when you add ammonium molybdate immediately this forms a coordinate covalent complex that is ammonium phosphate molybdate you will be getting a yellow color precipitate if the phosphate is present so the yellow color precipitate if your teacher asks you when you go for the phosphate confirmatory test the yellow color precipitate is what is it do what is the complex name of the complex which forms an yellow color precipitate that is ammonium phosphate molybdate so finally the leftover so this is the observation now let's come back and do the confirmatory test for phosphate so identification is through the dry heating test which has shown increase in the volume and next with ammonium molybdate what do we get we got an yellow color precipitate of ammonium phosphate molybdate so this yellow ppt confirm not it not confirmation we still have to confirm let's come back and do the confirmatory test <laughs> Right. now let's come back and see the confirmatory test of phosphate 
so basically for confirming the phosphate earlier we have done the identification now let's see so what you are going to do is you are going to take the salt which is given to you which is phosphate here I have taken so disodium hydrogen phosphate now to that you will be adding magnesium mixture okay what is magnesium mixture let us see so basically I will use this part of the board magnesium mixture contains solid ammonium chloride aqueous magnesium chloride what we will do we will mix these two we will boil it then we will cool it after cooling I am going to add to this ammonium hydroxide in excess till the solution becomes ammonic I mean ammonic we will say no the solution turns uh, or it, uh, the, it becomes ammonic in nature more of ammonia should be there so that particular mixture a mixture of um, so ammonium chloride magnesium chloride and ammonium hydroxide is called magnesia mixture I am going to add that magnesia mixture to this sample or the salt which is given and keep it aside I will make it to rest for five, 4 or 5 minutes after that the disodium hydrogen phosphate whatever is there because of the presence of magnesium mixture it forms a complex and it forms a white ppt of magnesium ammonium phosphate observe carefully this was a complex now you are adding magnesium mixture the ion gets replaced and you get a white ppt of magnesium ammonium phosphate thus the formation of this white ppt of magnesium ammonium phosphate confirms the presence of phosphate anion in the given salt right now let us come back and do finish off the last two classes of your independent radicals that is borate and fluoride done so when i have to test for the borate very simple test it is get take the salt which is given to you right now then you're going to add concentrated sulfuric acid to this then you're going to add it alcohol into that right which has a combination of ethanol and to denature it methanol also is there in that particular test uh, alcohol so you're going to take borate you're going to take concentrated sulfuric acid you are going to add alcohol and what you're going to do you're going to hold the test tube like this and put in a slanting way on the Bunsen burner immediately the whole thing catches off a green color flame the test tube you find the green color flame which is if it evolves out and it shows the presence of borate in the given salt okay just remember the green color flame try this very nice beautiful color flame you observe so the green color flame confirms the presence of borate and let's come back to fluoride so fluoride basically when fluoride anion is given most of the schools don't give this but let us see if they ask you in the viva question so fluoride here the salt which i have taken is sodium fluoride right the salt here now what i'm going to do is to this sodium fluoride i'm going to add concentrated sulfuric acid now we very well know hydrogen fluoride sodium fluoride, all these hydrogen fluoride is a weak acid basically right so what happens is because of this weak acid it dissociates to form just see here sodium sulfate and hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid is formed which is a weak acid that gets dissociated forming hydro hydrofluoric acid now this hydrofluoric acid how is this formed how do i know this what you're going to do is you're going to take this test tube this particular one which has hydrofluoric acid you take a glass rod and and introduce the mouth of the test tube because i have to test how much what is whether the hydrofluoric acid is produced or not so basically when you take the glass rod and introduce on the mouth of the test tube like this now this has h2f2 now you're going to take one glass rod and introduce it the mouth when you introduce a white color mass settles on the surface of the glass rod here on this glass rod white color mass why because this glass rod is made up of silica see here your hf reacts which is there inside this or h2f2 or hf which is there you know which has evolved out it reacts with the silica and it forms silica silicon tetrafluoride done so that white color mass which is there is that is the silicon tetrafluoride now what you do this silicon tetrafluoride you can easily hydrolyze it so i'm going to add water to this and after hydrolyzing it forms two different products one is just see here <coughs> hydrogen silico fluoride is one product one more is silicilic acid or hydrogen silicate so silicilic acid is a white gelatinous uh, precipitate which is formed at the base of the test tube right so this uh, silicon tetrafluoride it can be easily hydrolyzed it forms two different products one is hydrogen silico fluoride 
which is a solid one more salicylic acid which is a gelatinous white if not say ppt basic that's also a thick solid which is formed at the base of the test tube so that is salicylic acid the formula is h4sio4 salicylic acid or which is white gelatinous white solid so this is your independent radical students hope this is clear first step take the salt add concentrated sulfuric acid you will be getting hy hydrogen uh, hydro hydrofluoric acid or hydrogen fluoride which is a weak acid it further dissociates and we are going to test this with a glass rod which is made up of silica and glass means silicon you know that it reacts with it and forms a white mass which indicates the formation or presence of fluoride anion after that i am going to easy because it easily hydrolyzes once i hydrolyze i get a gelatinous white solid of salicylic acid or hydrogen silicate and one more is hydrosilico fluoride so this is your anion analysis students thank you for watching i'll meet you again with the cation analysis very interesting and easy way to understand and do it let's meet again very soon